arrives at the first island of San Benedicto. Coming to San Benedicto is always illuminating because of the large number of mantas we see here, and this has been our primary study site for almost 15 years now. These are the receivers for the listening station. They were placed underwater. The tags are then placed on the mantas. Every time the mantas go by, information is collected and stored by this, so it gives us a nice profile of how the mantas are using the habitat around the island. The purpose of the day's first dive is to place three underwater receiving systems at strategic locations around the island. Over the next several weeks, acoustic information on the mantas will be collected by these stations. Once the tags are attached to the animals, then the listening stations are the substitute for a, a person, and they will listen continuously night and day. Those tags will give us interesting data about tracking, about when the animals use a feeding area as opposed to a cleaning area. Do they leave the island at night? Do they return during the day? Those sorts of informational bases are really important in establishing management policies for this space. In addition to the receiver tags, Dr. Rubin has also brought along several satellite tags. The tags are attached to the animals using small darts that are fired by hand spears into the wing of the animal. They lodge in the tissue and then stay until the tag is to release. And the animals don't seem to react to it at all. And the tags record continually things like depth and pressure, temperature and location of the animal and then in a preset time will pop to the surface and send the data to a satellite system, which we get back in our lab. Manta rays are one of the most incredible organisms the planet has ever spawned. And the Save Our Seas Foundation, working with us to establish protection for those areas, bodes well for their future, and perhaps for the future of all people in the world's oceans. It's a magic place and they're magic beasts. <laughs>